Today is World Prematurity Day, and we have Dr. Femi Oladapo, Medical Officer at the Department of Reproductive Health and Research, telling us about WHO's work on preterm birth. Preterm babies are babies born alive before the end of the 37th week of pregnancy. Overall, about 1 in 10 babies are born preterm. This equates to approximately 15 million life borns every year. Premature babies face a high risk of death or lifelong disabilities when they survive, including learning, visual, and hearing problems. Almost 1 million babies die as a result of complications of prematurity every year. Preterm birth is currently the leading cause of death among children under the age of 5. A substantial proportion of these babies could be saved with effective interventions. So far, the global efforts to reduce preterm birth rates have not been successful, and therefore efforts have been focused on how to improve the outcomes for babies that are born preterm. In this capacity, as the normative arm of the United Nations, WHO issued a set of guidelines on interventions to improve health outcomes to the preterm baby, either given to the mother before the baby is born, or to the preterm baby itself immediately after birth. These guidelines were published in August 2015 and has been widely disseminated. The guideline covers the management of women in preterm labor and management of the preterm infant. For the mother, it covers the use of antenatal corticosteroids, tocolytics, magnesium sulfate for neuroprotection, antibiotic prophylaxis, and optimal mode of birth. For the preterm infant, it covers thermal care, CPAP, surfactant, and oxygen therapy, and its concentration. In addition to the published guideline, WHO also published a commentary in Lancet Global Health that summarized the recommendations that were included in the guideline. Regarding the use of antenatal corticosteroid, a strong recommendation is made for antenatal corticosteroid therapy for women at risk of preterm birth from 24 weeks to 34 weeks of gestation when the following conditions are met. 1. Gestational age assessment can be accurately undertaken. 2. The preterm birth is considered imminent. 3. There should be no clinical evidence of maternal infection. 4. Adequate childbirth care should be available within the facility where the mother is being managed. And lastly, the preterm birth should be able to receive adequate care where needed, including things like resuscitation, thermal care, feeding support, infection treatment, and safe oxygen therapy. For other maternal interventions, tocolytic treatments are not recommended for the purpose of improving newborn outcomes. This is a conditional recommendation. Also, magnesium sulfate is recommended to women before the 32nd week of gestation for the prevention of cerebral palsy in the infant and the child. This is a strong recommendation. Regarding women with preterm labor and ruptured membranes, antibiotic administration is strongly recommended. Whereas, if the membranes are intact, antibiotic administration is not recommended. For optimal mode of birth, routine delivery by caesarean section is not recommended, irrespective of whether the baby is in cephalic presentation or a bridge presentation. This is a conditional recommendation. For the baby, there are three key elements of preterm care. This includes warmth, feeding, and respiratory support. WHO already issued recommendations for optimal feeding of preterm infants in 2011, so the current guideline does not include recommendations on feeding of the preterm infant. However, the guideline includes recommendations on kangaroo mother care. It strongly recommends kangaroo mother care as routine care for clinically stable newborns, weighing 2,000 grams or less at birth. This is a strong recommendation. For unstable newborns weighing 2,000 grams or less at birth, or stable newborns weighing less than 2,000 grams, who cannot be given kangaroo mother care, such babies should be cared for under radiant warmers or in incubators. This is also a strong recommendation. For respiratory support, continuous positive airway pressure therapy is recommended for care of preterm newborns with respiratory distress syndrome. 
This is also a strong recommendation. In addition, surfactant replacement therapy for babies that are intubated and ventilated is conditionally recommended for babies with respiratory distress syndrome. For oxygen therapy, the guideline strongly recommends against the use of 100% oxygen for ventilation of babies born before 32 weeks. It is recommended that oxygen therapy should be started with 30% oxygen or room hair where blended oxygen is not available. This is a strong recommendation. In addition, progressively higher concentrations of oxygen should only be considered in situations where the newborn undergoing therapy has a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute after 30 seconds of adequate ventilation with 30% oxygen or air. This is a strong recommendation. For more information, you can visit the following website or contact us at reproductivehealth at who.int or mncah at who.int. Thank you.